Nintendo, Ape Incorporated, and HAL Laboratories present... Earthbound, the war against Gygus. Da 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 ba ba da ba ba da ba da ba 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 ra da 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 fly away. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome to my new Let's Play of Earthbound. Ho ho! I am so happy to bring this to you guys. Earthbound is an RPG set in 1990s America, and ironically enough, the 20th anniversary of this game will come and go in the duration of this Let's Play. June 5th, 1995 was the date that this game was released in North America, and while it didn't receive much popularity at the time, it developed a small but quickly and very, very rapidly growing fan base that made it the game that it is today. Because of their dedication, word got out, petitions were made, and its popularity increased all over the years. The popularity of this game is bigger today than it ever has been, which is strange. You'd think that normally uh, a game's popularity would die out, but not in the case of Mother 2, aka Earthbound. If it weren't for those fans, it would not have been re-released in 2014 on the Wii U Virtual Console, and it wouldn't have made it, it, and NES wouldn't have made it in Brawl, or Melee, or Smash 4. So, it was the fans who truly made this game great, though it was the game that truly made the fans. This is Earthbound, one of my favorite games of all time, and I am very, very proud to present it. Let's go ahead and jump on in before this cutscene plays again. Uh, you can see that I actually already kind of practiced, so let's go ahead and delete this file. Yes, I would like to delete it, because I would like to start a new game with <laughs> a fast tech speed, not a slow one. Uh, stereo, yeah. And already, I can point out that this Let's Play is going to be better than any Let's Play of Earthbound you have ever seen in all your born days. Do you know why? Because I'm going to be changing <laughs> the text box color every episode. <laughs> yes, truly, this is going to be the best Let's Play just because of that. So let's go ahead and choose plain for the first episode. Uh, we can name the main characters. I will choose Don't Care, and it will automatically name them the default names that they are known by. So it could be Ness, it could be Alec, which is, no, Roger, Will, Brian, Tyler, Lane, or Ness. We're choosing Ness because his name is Ness. Name her too. Okay. Uh, don't care. Paula, Nancy, Sky. That's a cool name. Paige, eh. Marie, Holly. I can actually see Holly. I can see Holly and Paula. Jane, and or Paula. Paula. We're doing. We're doing Paula. Now. In case this is a little bit vague, we're naming all of the party members, which is a little bit strange in my opinion. If it were if it were my game, I guess I would name the characters as you got them instead of spoiling you for the entire cast. But I mean, we just saw the entire cast on the title screen, so I guess it's okay. The story isn't really something that that spoilers sh are would be a problem. So, I can see this. It's fine. Jeff, Dan, Henry, Isaac, Ralph, Sean, Rob or Jeff. It's Jeff. Okay, and finally, Pooh. Now his other names are actually pretty interesting because Pooh is a very weird name and in my opinion it's a little bit... I'm not gonna say racist because racist is a term that's thrown around way too much these days, uh, but it's a little bit, I don't know, strange. It seems to be kind of mocking uh, the the cultures that would have names similar to this, but not exactly like this. I don't know. It's just me. Kato. Kai. Omar. I need to tell my friend, I need to tell Dave about that because he frequently uses the name Omar in, in video games. So I should tell him about that. Ramen. Okay. Aziz. That's a cool name. Lado. Or Pooh. His name's Pooh. 
name your pet, which is also Ness. No, it's a dog that's hiding behind Ness. Don't care. King, Peach, not Peach, no. Sparky, Rex, common. Ba baby, also a common name. Rover, extremely common. Misty, a girl's name. Let's do King. Because that's his name once again. I can't, I need to stress that those are his name. Favorite homemade food. Well, <laughs> considering I just had my favorite food tonight, which was awesome, uh, it can't be any of these. Steak, nope. Pie, no. Pasta, cake, eggs, bread, salmon. That's a, that's actually pretty close to my favorite food that I had tonight. I had grilled mahi-mahi, which is really sweet. Mahi-mahi is like this Hawaiian fish, and we always cook it, grill it up really spicy. It's nice. Uh, favorite thing? Rockin'. That's a cool default. Hammer. Hammer, what? Love. Gifts. Slime. Okay. <laughs> this game's humor coming out. Pretty, pretty strong early on. Gaming, that's that's very suitable. Boxing, no, that's not my thing. Rocking, sure. I actually like jamming to some good <laughs> classical tunes. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Let's go. Let's start one of my favorite games of all time, Earthbound. The year is 1990X. Onet, a small town in Eagle Land. Ness's house. That was... that's not something you wake up to every night. And there we are. This is this is Ness in his pajamas, but this is the Ness that we all know and love. The first face that these faces will see in this game is that of the main character, Ness, in all of his bedheaded glory. Let's go outside to investigate the scene of the crash. Okay, we can go down the hall, but I personally would rather go into this door because it's interesting. It has our sister. This is Tracy. And she, why are you full, woman, why are you fully dressed? Hey, bro, did the sound wake you up? Were you freaked out? Um, yeah, that's why I'm out here, but why are you fully dressed? That makes no sense. It's like late at night. It's at least dark, so it's, it's pretty late at night. I'm guessing it's like summer or something. Do you think mom would let me stay up late tonight? I can't seem to fall back to, oh, oh, I see that. That's a, that's a common younger kid's trick, because I, I know, because I tried it. You want to stay up late, so you come down and come downstairs, and you're like, Mom, I can't sleep, but I'm in my normal clothes, and I don't want to make them go to waste, so can I stay up, please? It, it never works, kids. Anyway, uh, that in that present was a crack bat that I, <laughs> just out of muscle memory, I took. Uh, so a crack bat is our first weapon of the game. We can click help. In the in the tutorial, not tutorial, in the menus to see what it is. Crack bat. Ness can equip this weapon. Okay, let's go ahead and equip that weapon using the equip button. Equip the cracked bat. It will make our offense go up to six. I don't have to. We are not going to be facing some battles for a while, but I don't really need to say what offense or defense does. It's pretty obvious, uh, but I'll say it anyway just because I like to be informative. Offense uh, increases the power of our physical attacks, so attacks with a weapon, and defense reduces our the physical damage that we take. So there's that. There's mom. What was that noise? Ness, you don't seem scared. Are you nuts? I know you want to check it out. Oh, okay. You'll sneak out of your room anyway, even if I asked you not to. At least change out of your jammies before you go. Oh, that's a good mom. Realizing that instead of discipline her, disciplining her child for not listening to her, she'll just let him do whatever he wants. But at least she's dressing him. And Ness isn't that bad-mannered. I mean, come on. He's, he's a nice boy. There's King, which we just named. Besides humans, dogs also sleep at night. Why aren't you asleep? <laughs> Goofy dog who can t talk somehow. 
So, going outside, we can talk to some people, and it is indeed the dead of night because we saw that earlier, time has not passed. Did you hear the big bang? I think a meteorite landed nearby. I want to be the first to see it, okay? I'm going to try to be the first to get there. <laughs> As you just walk in place next to a tree. Okay, whatever, bro. This game is very good. Uh, as we go through it, you will hear some of the excellent di dialogue. The game's writing is immaculate, and I don't even use that term much. It is, it's amazing. It's humorous. This isn't a game to really be taken too seriously because it's just too funny for that to happen. I want to return home, but the road is closed. People are taking this meteorite situation too seriously. <laughs> I believe you. Who are you? Who are you? Onet police are infinite, infamous for closing roads if something is going on. We're going for the world <laughs> record. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. Don't panic. It's just a... What? A meteorite that... Who? Fell. I just want to... What? Um, go home. <laughs> Poor man. He has a speech impediment. That's the worst kind. It's not like an eating impediment where you could fix that by just drinking really good, thick drinks. He has a speech impediment, so he's had that since grade school... He's trying to get that fixed. He's like going to the doctors, and they're they're saying, "Bro, just talk right." And he's like, "No, I, I, I what? You can't. Sorry, I, um, don't. No." And they're like, "Oh, goofy Leopold, Frankenhofer, you're you'll be okay." And he's like, "No, help me. Don't just tell me. Don't you know what time it is? Get your butt home pronto." No, you don't order me. <laughs> I know my rights and the. 27th Amendment says that I can get up in the middle of the night and walk around. You don't know. A meteorite has landed. The sharks are running wild in town. You kids are wandering around and... I'm hungry. I hate my job. Aww. Well, if you hate it so much, why are you smiling? <laughs> why are you smiling? I guess, I guess just default. He, he used to be cheery so much that it looks like he's smiling when he's really hurting inside that poor, poor soul. It's dangerous to go to the hilltop. Even if I advise you not to go, it won't stop you, will it? No? At least you... You had sense beaten into you at a young age that you can't stop kids doing for what they want to do? I'll stop. I'm sorry. Hey, you! Don't you know what time it is? Um... I could make a Xenoblade joke, but I'm going to avoid that right now because... I've been playing a lot of Xenoblade recently, and I don't want to make this Let's Play Earthbound, but with Xenoblade references everywhere. I want to make it Earthbound with... 90s pop culture references everywhere. So anyway, this present is useful, but I will not take it. Why? Because I have found that it's better to take that a little bit later. This episode, definitely, but just a little bit later in the episode. Just trust me on it. It will be worth your while. Hey, Ness. Hi, buddy. A meteorite fell down and went BOOM! It was a real mess for a while. I was fine because I always eat garlic and work out to help make my body stronger. However, the weaker citizens probably fainted. I also wanted to tell you, uh, whoops, I almost told you about my, uh, by the way, Ness, did you check out my billboard? I wrote the message myself. That's my real job, you know, um, I'm the, I'm the billboard guy. Why don't you go check out my work? Oh man, so you're like the billboard guy to my annotation man. <laughs> People who watch the bonus episodes of, that I released before this will know what I'm talking about. Treasure Hunter. This is Liar X Aggerate's house. Or if you read that quickly as one word, Liar Exaggerate. Yeah, we already know not to believe anything he says based on his <laughs> his unibrow, gray mustache, and weird parted and curled, and it also looks like his hair is a little bit waxed, like a mustache. <laughs> that That is his name. That meteorite looks different than usual. It's strange and marvelous, as well as mysterious. Ooh. <laughs> that guy is facing a wall for far too long. Nice timing, Ness. Will you do something about Pokey? He's driving me nuts. Are you two friends? Um. <laughs> no, I don't know who you're talking about. You're not friends, but aren't you neighbors? Come on, help me out here. Nice timing, Ness. Will you do something about Pokey? He's driving me nuts. Are you two friends? Uh, sure, why not? And you live in the house next to his. I see. Expert sleuthing skills there, Mr. Man. Shh! Shh! Okay. Some of these some of these policemen just don't want to be talked to. Like this guy. All he wants to do is talk. He's just like, clear out, get out of my way. Clear out, get out of my way. Clear out, get out of my way. Clear out. Out, way, get out, get my. 
or whoops, my mistake. I meant get out of my way. <laughs> He's not even going in. <laughs> Let's talk to Pokey before we <laughs> embarrass these officers more because they're they all seem to have just like weird speech flaws. It's weird. They're they're all either <laughs> too tied up in what they want to do, what they're thinking, or they actually are concerned about us and they want us to go home, but we're a rebellious child who it lives in the 90s and doesn't give to popsicles what they say. Hey, Ness, <laughs> don't be rubbernecking. You're getting in the cops, or er, oops, I mean officer's way. You can go home now. Tomorrow, I, Pokey, will tell you more about the strange meteorite. I'm fine here, but you're bugging the officers. Okay, so our job's done. We've seen the meteorite, so let's go ahead and go home. Nothing else to do. Can we talk to you again? Will you say something new? <sighs> I wonder when the cops will leave. Huh. It... I don't... I don't know. I, I've never gotten this inkling before, but it almost seems like he's standing out here so he doesn't look uh, suspicious or conspicuous and making sure simultaneously that the police don't come into his house and take him by surprise because he's doing something very shady. That That's what it seems to me, ignoring that present. That's, it seems like he's trying to do that, but eh, I don't know. We say something new now? Hey you, don't you know what time- no, you'll say the same thing. Okay. So we're done here. We can just go ahead and go home. We're, we got dressed, we came out, and we're ready to go back home. Let's go. Hello Mr. Smiley Man who's crying on the inside. Hello Mr. Man who- I forgot your story. Hi guy who walks in front of tree hello man who's stuck from getting home couldn't he just like coming down here and we'll walk through the trees it seems like a very easy solution but I don't know maybe these trees are as impenetrable as since Ness can't get through them I don't know maybe impenetrable forests a hoe welcome home Ness it's not necessary to talk about it right now it's late scoot off to bed now later that night. Huh. Two disturbances in one night, eh? Okay. Well, someone's pounding on our door and we're back in our jammies, so I suppose we should go out here. And there's, there's, I, did I mention her name? I didn't mention her name. Her name's Tracy. I was too busy trying not to flood you guys with my thoughts about this game. I want it, I don't want the uh, first episode to be all the information that I could tell you throughout the Let's Play in one episode. No, I want it to be, this is the first episode, it's your first look at the game, I won't try to flood you. Someone's knocking at the door. What an annoying knock. I agree, it's very regular. It's just kind of like they're... They have a twitchy fist, and they're just twitching, because that's how stuff works. Let's talk to our dog, King. King, I got fleas. Su ugh. I got fleas sucking me dry, so I'm just going to lie still for now. A good idea. Hey, mom, how are you? My land. Who could be knocking at the door at this time of night? Would you answer it? Sure. Hey, l listen to what I've got to say. When I took Picky, Picky to the place where the meteorite landed... Oh, good evening, ma'am. You're looking lovely as usual. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, the police that were guarding the meteorite landings left suddenly to deal with the sharks. You know the sharks. They're the local ruffians. And they were really going wild. Suddenly, I noticed that Picky was gone. I blame the cops. It certainly wasn't my fault at all. When my dad gets back, I know I'm going to get it. You're my bestest friend. Won't you help me find Picky? Uh, well, I, I'm kind of a yes man, so sure. I, I will. Okay, good buddy. Let's blow this popsicle stand. Before we go, why don't you say goodbye to your mom? Don't you agree, ma'am? I love how he's really cordial to her face, and then behind her back, he's just kind of snickering for some unknown reason. I mean, she's not ugly. She looks lovely. She's smiling. She's inside him. Get out. I need to talk to you. Thank you. Stop standing on top of my my friend, or supposed friend. I know that the dog is unreliable, but you should take King along. The cracked bat in Tracy's room could help out at, at a time like this. No matter what anybody says, you're a cura courageous strong boy. You're my very own natural-born fighter. You'll go far. Remember to go for it. 
but I think you should change out of your jammies before you leave. And once again, our mom looking after our best interests. Let's go ahead and see Tracy. <laughs> or or not, because she's not here. Let's let's go. <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're like, Ness, are, are you lost again? I know you have trouble in this house that you've lived in all your life, but could you just try to get it together, honey, please? Thank you. I'll do everything I can to help you. Good luck on your adventure. You might get hungry along the way, so here's a cookie. Ness got the cookie. You can leave anything you don't need with me. Do you want me to hang on to something? Sure, uh, what do you want to store? Nothing, I accidentally said yes. Uh, leave. Bye. Goodbye. See ya. And... <laughs> she's... Our mom mentioned taking King, so... Let's talk to King. Do you want me to go with you? What happens if you say no? Oh, I get it. You just wanted to talk to me because I'm so lovable. Aww. That's so cute. He really is. He's so... He's so cute. But we'll take him anyway, because cu cute dogs deserve to go into the heat of battle. King joins you. And we have our first party member. There's Pokey. Alright, you got in front and I'll follow at a safe distance. Let's get going. Pokey joins you. And before we leave, we're interrupted by... <laughs> whatever in this world is left to interrupt us. Ness answered the phone. Hello, it's your dad. Work to exhaustion when you're young. Have you ever heard of a weird saying like this? Just remember, I'm always behind you 100%. Don't be afraid. I know that you're brave. You can do it. Don't forget to call me periodically during your adventure. I can make a record of your progress when you call me. Oh, yeah. I deposited $30 into your bank account. Do you have your ATM card? Withdraw your money from any cash machine and buy whatever you need. Good luck, my boy. I feel like such a hero. What? Well, the father of a hero, at least. Wahaha. Slam. Beep. And that's that. We, me, we met a lot of characters now, and now that most of the quote-unquote cutscenes of the game are out of the way, I can talk about Earthbound itself. Uh, this was introduced... Oh, and all the police are gone, so we can go... You wait, sir. You wait your turn. I'll be with you in a moment. Anyway. Uh... I was introduced to this game by not only <laughs> Super Smash Brothers, because most people were introduced to Earthbound through Smash Brothers, since Ness is in it, um, but also because of a YouTube user who you guys <laughs> know very well, Stephen George of Stephen Plays and Stephen Vlog. He is the biggest fan I know of of this game. and. It has literally changed his life. I won't go over the story. You guys could just go out and check out check out his channel to find out how it has. But his his enthusiasm about the game uh, made me want to play it, and I did, and I loved it. And now I'm an Earthbound fan because of the game, not because of someone I know who likes it. And I'm really happy that I tried out the game, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've only played it once before, and it was last year because I I got it for, with the. Uh, on the Wii U Virtual Console, and I enjoyed it quite a lot, and so I wanted to play it for you guys. Okay, we have two crows here. Uh, this is an example of a battle. Let's go ahead and get in it, and we get the gray squirrels, and I'll explain what that meant in a moment. We engage the spiteful crow. Uh, we Right off, we have a bunch of different options. We have bash, which will make use of our cracked bat, which... Did we? Yeah, we equipped that. Uh, we'll make use of our crack bat and just hit him in the face for physical damage. We can use our goods to eat our cookie to restore, I think, like 6 HP. Uh, we can use auto fight, which will have the game basically control Ness and tell him what to do. That Tell him the optimal way to beat this enemy, and he'll do it, which I'll never use. I'll never use auto fight unless I actually accidentally misclick something. Uh, run away, which just runs away. It's not guaranteed, but... If you're facing a hard enemy, it's sometimes the best option. Defend, which will reduce the amount of physical damage we'll take from the Spiteful Crow. And PSI, which I'll explain when we actually can use it. Uh, let's go ahead and bash this guy for now. Spiteful Crow, yes. Spiteful Crow, crow pecked at your eyes. Eight damage. And King deals five damage. Pokey does nothing because he's useless. And we missed an attack. That's wonderful. Spiteful Crow pecked and missed. Good. And he dodged. A lot of missing going on. So much missing. Okay. This is a great first battle. Oh, man. Lunch forward. Dodging. Pokey's useless. 
And more dot. Oh, this is gonna be good. Pecked at my eyes. Eight day. I'm gonna. I'm going to die to the crow. I am going to die to the crow. I am so gonna die to the crow. Oh, this is dumb. Okay, yes! Yes, King! Did you kill him? Yes! Sorry, you didn't kill him. He made him tame. Because this game came before Pokemon and the and the teams that worked on this game later moved on to form Creatures Incorporated, which made Pokemon. So you'll see a lot of similarities. And in there, we got a, in that battle, we got a cookie from the Spiteful Crow. Uh, the Spiteful Crow has a 100% chance, if I recall correctly, of dropping cookies. And this is useful for, for something that I'm going to be using the cookies for in between episodes. It, this episode's not over, but I just wanted to say that. Uh, let's see, I want to go over my stats real quick. I don't want to make the first episode take too long, but I do want to have some information here. Um, since we're just in, in the heat of battle, I should I suppose I should explain this, what the stats do. I already explained offense, physical attacks, not PSI. Uh, defense, once again, it guards against physical attacks, not PSI. Uh, speed determines who goes first in a battle. Uh, basically, if your speed is about as fast as an enemy's, you'll go, it's kind of random who goes first. But if your speed is drastically higher than the, an enemy's speed, you'll go first. But this also applies for your teammates. If I have a party member that has a slower speed than Ness, then Ness will go first. So you can use that to your advantage if you're, if you're using healing things if you're trying to heal one of your party members before they go because they need it then you can use that to your advantage next is guts uh guts determines two things that are very important one are your smash attacks we actually got to see one king uh hit the spite for crow with uh, smash attack in that battle so the higher your guts the higher chance you will be dealing smash attacks and the higher your guts, the more chance you will survive mortal damage. Mortal damage happens when you, um, when your HP would be reduced to zero, killing you, but instead, sometimes your guts can kick in and re make it so your health is reduced to one instead of zero, saving your life. This is very useful. Next is vitality. The more vitality you have, the more HP you will have. The ratio of this is about, um, one point of vitality will equal 15 points of HP, and you can see that that is roughly accurate since we have 30 HP and we have two vitality, so that's pretty accurate. It's it's not cut and dry, one to 15, it will sometimes be off. Uh, IQ determines how much psychic points we have, which you can see in the bottom is PP. So psychic points are the mana or resource for using psychic abilities in this game, which we don't have a psychic, psychic ability yet, but we will very, very soon. Uh, the ratio for that is like 1 to 5, so 1 IQ equals 5 PP, and that, you can see once again, that carries over for our total psychic points. Finally, is luck. This determines um, the chance that we will hit a foe, and based on that last battle, the chance is rather low because we have very low luck. The higher, the higher luck you have, the better chance you have of hitting an opponent, and the higher luck you have, the better chance you have of dodging an attack. Now, there is a difference between um, an, an attack missing and an attack being dodged. If it's dodged, that means the enemy, or you, have the, enough luck to dodge it. If it missed, then that means that the person who used the attack, and I'm talking about physical attacks, didn't have high enough luck, so it missed. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and cut this, uh, let's not cut this battle out. Let's go ahead and show this battle now that you know what's going on. Uh, we can pretty much bash our way through the game. I actually am kind of worried about my health here, but I'm going to bite the bullet and try. Oh, this is bad. I was dumb. Am I going to... Am I going to die? Uh, I don't have that. Uh, am I going to die? Let's use this. Spiteful Crow has a big grin on his face. Yes! Oh, uh, we used our cookie and we recovered 6 HP. Let's go ahead and do that again yeah spy for crow big grin yes i can really rely on big grins and more hps okay now we can kill him now that he's actually stopping us from eating cookies eight damage and he became tame and we have 11 hp left okay we cannot find another crow uh once again we get a cookie and we get hit level two offense went up by one maximum hp went up by two ness realized the power of life up alpha and when I said soon, I meant immediately. We now have a psychic ability, Life Up Alpha. For the cost of 5 PP, we can restore, if I recall, 
40 HP, I think, but we're going to use it because I don't want to be using too many cookies. Now, there's a there's a snake right there. It's called a coil snake. It's it's weak, but it does a pretty good amount of damage. Like it, it's squishy, but it does damage. So, I want to ignore him because he gives barely any XP. And really, XP is the only thing I'm concerned about. XP and cookies. And this runaway dog is a great example of an enemy we'd want to fight early on in the game because it gives more XP than any other enemy that we can face right now. So let's go ahead and bash him into the ground. King start barking, we're the only one, and everyone's missing. Snap, these <laughs> first two battles are not not fu funny. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of pitiful that we're missing so much. Really, I've not missed this much in my like my first couple battles in the game, which is kind of weird. And oh wow, thank you for game for being kind. That is a magic butterfly. It will heal us of our PP. That is one of the only ways to do so, and it will heal us for 20 PP. And since we have a maximum of 10 right now, what we could do is use this on ourselves, drain ourselves completely of psychic points, but then grab the butterfly, and it will bring us back up to maximum. That's that's pretty cool. So magic butterflies are sort of like healing stations if you use that wisely. If you um if you heal yourself and then refund the cost of the healing, it's sort of like free health, which is really nice. And there's another crow. Now, in fact, I want to prove that this is a Wii U game and create restore point. Now, why am I cheating and making save states? Because I want to be making use of a cheat a l in a, a little bit in the future that will re require that restore point. And snap! <laughs> uh, well, thank you, game, for reminding me that I need to explain that. Um, when, you when you encounter an enemy, uh, the swirl that happens when the battle starts actually determines things. If you an approach an enemy from behind, you will get a green swirl, which means that you get a surprise first attack, a uh, first turn, that the enemy does not have a chance to retaliate against. And a red swirl, which I just got very foolishly, means that the enemy approached you from behind and got a free hit before the battle even begins. That is annoying, and I should not have done that. And I'm taking damage, but I'm I'm good. I'm I'm fine. Uh, never mind. I might be in a pickle, slight pickle. Let's do 11 HP. Tried to steal something, but failed. That's another thing that that the spiteful crows can do, which is really annoying. They can steal your items, which is why I suggested that you don't take that present. Because if you encounter any of those of these enemies, then there's a really good chance that they could steal your bread roll, and that restores something along the lines of 20 HP, which is really nice. Let's go and use life up alpha here. And he missed. The good thing is, oh, never mind. We didn't even have a chance to use our our life up. Uh, three eight XP, and we got another cookie. Sweet. That's nice. It's cool because I've explained a lot of stuff without actually t going out of my way to explain things. Now we can grab the bread roll. Bread roll. Thank you. And um, uh, I'm thinking no. Let's not use it. Let's use life up alpha. Yeah, max out our HP, which means we're at 32. Okay. Now, let's see. What do I want to do here? Uh, 4 XP... To, yeah, let's let's do another battle, because I know for a fact that runaway dogs give us 4 XP, so just killing this guy will... Or, sorry, taming him, will immediately bring us to level 3, which is something I want. And they don't do a ton of damage, so we're pretty good here. We're, we're nice. We're, we're pretty frosty. Yeah, and we're, we're just totally obliterating him, even though King's doing most of the work. King, you got it. You got it, bruh. Dog v. Dog, yeah. Do it. 4 XP, and we're now level 3. Offense went up by 2. Guts went up by 1. Vitality went up by 1, so our HP went up. And IQ went up by 1, so our, I, uh, our PP went up. Uh, maximum HP went up by 13. Maximum PP went up by 5. Awesome. Whenever, whenever we get a level up, I'm always way more excited about getting, um, whatchamacallit, getting PP than HP, because PP means free heals, and I'm all about them heals. In fact, pretty soon, we won't be, we won't be actually needing food items. I'm just getting them for the certain cheat that I mentioned that I would like to show off, that I can't really show off later, so I'll, I'll do it here. Liar exaggerate. Hey, Ness, I was too busy to investigate, but I heard a child's voice on the hilltop. I'm a busy man, but... Uh, but when I do a job, I do it well. I'm a man's man. 
And I don't believe anything you say because your name's Liar Exaggerate. <laughs> you should really try to change that. I don't know, could you? Yeah, you could probably. Yeah, you could change your name in the 90s. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, woof. If I knew this was going to be such a scary place, I sh wouldn't have come along. I'm out of here. Man, that's. That's actually not that. I'm a little bit concerned because of how much Ness has been missing and how much King has been carrying me. But it's fine. We're 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 good. We're good. What? Oh, you woke me up, Pokey. I've been looking all over for you. You see, Pokey got scared and ran away. Well, I'm glad that you're okay at least. Well, let's go home now. I bet Mom and Dad are worried sick about us. Geez, sometimes I wonder which one of us is the real big brother. I know the feeling. Us younger siblings sometimes feel like we're the older. Picky joins you. Yay, we have Picky, and he's smiling, unlike Pokey, who has this really weird expression, and you can't even see his eyes, so it's just like, I have no idea what that expression even is. Is he <laughs> angry? I don't even know. I don't even know. Ness, do you hear a, a buzzing that sounds like a bee flying around? No, I don't. Oh, come on, you must hear it. A bee I am. Not. I'm from ten years in the future, and... In the future, all is devastation. Gygus, the universal cosmic destroyer, sent all to the dark- the horror of eternal darkness. However, you must listen. Where I am from, there is a well-known legend that has been handed down from ancient times. It says, when the chosen boy reaches the point, he will find the light. The passing of time will shatter the nightmare rock and reveal the path of light. You see, it is my opinion that you are that boy, Ness. This I believe. Gygus Monster's plan must have been set in motion somewhere on Earth. If you start to confront the enemy immediately, you may have time to counter the evil intentions of Gygus. Three things are of the utmost importance. Wisdom, courage, and friendship. The legends from the ancient times tell of three boys and a girl who defeat Gygus. I will tell you more later. Go now, and do not be anxious about the future. You have much more work to do, Ness. Did you listen to what I told you? Yes, I did. Thank you to for listening to my long story. You are as exceptional as I expected you to be. And just like that, we have a new party member, our, four, our third party member. Buzz Buzz now joins you. Ness, it looks like you're really in a lot of trouble this time. Three boys, he said. Uh, I'm not one of those three, am I? Because I'm not into this kind of thing at all. Jeez, my heart is almost pounding right out of my chest. So we have Buzz Buzz, and he's following us. That's that's pretty neat. And all the enemies are gone because Buzz Buzz is awesome. He's like this flying guy who <laughs> acts like a fly in their ear and, <laughs> and makes them go away. So right, So now we have a mission. We are the destined child, possibly. At least that's what the strange bee man told us. We are destined to defeat a an evil being called Gygus, who will set who will uh, put the world into chaos sometime in the future. Well, we did see this guy come down from the sky from a meteorite, so I think we should believe what he says. Anyway, we're supposed to return Picky home, so let's go ahead and go up. It's been a long time, Buzz Buzz. You've been successful at foiling Master Gygus' plans, but, Buzz Buzz, you must now surrender. You're no longer a hero, but just a useless insect. I'll stomp you hard. Our first boss, Starman Jr. For the most part, uh, Buzz Buzz will carry us. He will be shielding us of any damage that the Starman sends at us. So we can actually do nothing and still win the fight. But I feel like I want to help, so let's go ahead and just bash away. We have no uh, uh, we have no offensive psychic abilities, but we can we do have a cracked bat that will probably do a lot of damage against a steel man. Eight damage. That's actually not that bad, <laughs> considering how much damage we were doing to the dogs. Eight damage isn't isn't that nasty. So we have a psychic shield that Buzz Buzz put, puts up, so all of Starman's Jr. Starman Jr.'s psychic abilities, which are all the moves that he has- OH MY GOODNESS! Uh, Buzz Buzz? Did 150 damage to the- oh, wow. Uh, that's- that's awesome. Okay. 
So, that's pretty cool. In fact, if memory serves, this guy only has 200 HP, so he's he's in the red right now. He has like 30 health left. Let's see if, if Ness can get the last hit on this. It'd be really funny if Picky did. Picky? No? Okay. Don't, don't do it. Don't steal my thunder. PSI Fire Alpha will be, will disappear thanks to Buzz Buzz Psychic Shield. And we can continue to bash. Buzz Buzz attacks, does 85 damage, and defeats the Starman Jr. Because Buzz Buzz, oh my goodness. And we get 16 XP, but not a level up, surprisingly. Phew, I was taking a big chance there. He came from 10 years in the future to kill me, so we can't relax yet. From now on, you'll be fighting enemies sent by Gygas, as well as humans who have evil thoughts. They'll definitely make trouble during your adventure. Animals are also becoming violent due to Gygas' influence over the evil in their minds. It is the truth, so listen. What? Okay, we got we got 16... Okay, we're 11 XP from the next level. Okay, so I was, I was kind of wondering why we didn't hit level 4 there, but it's all good. So we were supposed to remove, uh, bring Picky back to his home, so let's go and do that. This is their home since they live right next to Ness's family. So my goodness, let's talk to her because that face means it must tell a story. Where in Sam Hill have you boys been? I'll have to think of a suitable punishment. Goodness. That is frightening. What is with her mouth? That is, that is very, fr oh my goodness, that's frightening. And we have the dad, which is less frightening, but he's still kind of frightening. I'm really sorry that my kids troubled you so much. Both of you are really going to get it now. Snap. They they just got beat or told or whatever that sound means. They they got it. They sure got it. By the way, I, w I would be happy if you left my house sometime soon. I'm tired of seeing your, your family living next door. We've loaned your th father a lot of money. It may have been a hundred thousand dollars or more. Well, I guess it really could have been less. But because of the loan, my family and I now live in poverty. My husband is too is much too lenient with the children. Oh well, nice guys finish last. That's the story of our life. I I think it's a dung beetle. I'll smash your guts out. Buzz Buzz is down. Ah, I was much weaker than I thought. So you must now you must now begin your adventure. See, you. Oh, I just remembered. Listen to my final words. To defeat Gygas, your own power must unite with the Earth's. The Earth will then channel your power and multiply it. There are eight points that you must visit. Make these places your own. Each of these locations is your sanctuary. One of them is near Onet. It is called Giant Step. Just go there first. Do you understand? Yes. All right. You're a very intelligent. You're a very y intelligent young man, and oh, the pain! Everything is getting dark. Before I pass on, I want to give you something. It is the soundstone. You can record the melodies from the eight your sanctuary locations into the stone. It's an awesome ice item. By the way, I'm almost gone. But did you want to hear the story one more time? Now you can say no, and he will keep talking as long as you keep saying no. So there's really no rush, but eventually you'll have just have to accept the inevitable and say never. Oops, I meant to say that. <laughs> Way to ruin a moment, pal. Good job. I am. I, uh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> just no, okay, I won't mash A, okay, want to give me something, soundstone, yes, I will not mash A because <laughs> we've now seen this three times, <laughs> no, I don't want to say it, no, good, It it's already dawn outside, because I've talked for a long time because you kept saying yes, but it doesn't matter to me, I'm fading fast, uh, ah, <sighs> Ness got the soundstone. Now, I had mentioned that I will be abusing a certain glitch uh, later, and that has to do with the soundstone. Uh, but I will be explaining that next episode because off screen, at 
the end of this episode, I'm going to go back to that restore point I had made and uh, farm up on the crows. Not for the experience. I don't care about the experience. All I want are the cookies. I want to get as many cookies as I can to fill up my inventory. Then... When Buzz Buzz gives me the soundstone, something special will happen. I guess I can explain now. I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait. But I would like to at least show that off. You guys... Actually, yeah, I'll explain it. Because I, I want you guys, your guys' opinion on this. This will likely be the only glitch I'm going to be exploiting. The only glitch I know. But it's something that would be very useful um, later on the game. A actually, at any point of the game. It is, if you have a, an inventory that's full, when Buzz Buzz gives you the soundstone, it will default be sent to Tracy. It's not something that was meant to be, but it's something that happens. Uh, because if you remember, Tracy had said that if we have anything that we want to store with her, we can. So, any excess items will automatically go to her, including the soundstone. It doesn't affect anything in the game. So, there's nothing that will break because of it. We'll still do things like we would normally do, except that now we would have a free inventory slot. I've never abused this before, and I'm not sure if I should abuse it in the Let's Play. That's why I want your opinions on this. Because it's something that I would kind of like to try, and it would be very convenient for the Let's Play, but it's a glitch, and I'm not sure if you guys are fine with that. Uh, if, if you are, post in the comments. If you aren't, then do the same. But before we... Where did... Pokey go. Where did... Where did Pokey go? He was right here. Wasn't he? I don't want to look at the meteorite anymore. He was here. Where... What? Okay, this is strange, because I, I saw Pokey. I know he was here. And now he's gone? Did he leave and I didn't see... I don't know. Is he, like, standing on top of Picky? Okay, let's leave and come back. I, I know th it's the end of the episode, but I just, I'm curious. I am immensely curious. Where did he go? Now he's there. Okay, so <laughs> while I was talking about glitches, ironically, Pokey despawned. That is wacky. That is really wacky. My dad really got after me. He said I get no dessert for the rest of the decade. And his mother says that his father's too lenient on him. I wonder what she would do to him if she had her way. That's scary. Anyway, that is going to be it for this episode. Like I said, I will be doing that glitch off screen. Um, we can get the soundstone back. Like, I I'm going to be showing off the glitch, but I want your guys' opinions at if I should actually use it. If I should uh, keep this the soundstone in my inventory or leave it with Tracy. But either way, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I release new episodes of Earthbound Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And if you like this episode, then comment. If you don't like this episode, then comment and tell me how I can make the next episode so that you would like it. And uh, that's going to be it. I will see you guys next time for another Paladin Plays Earthbound. This is a great game, and it only gets better. See you guys then.